A couple of days ago, Apple broke the internet by announcing that they were releasing Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro on iPad. On that same day, I was lucky enough to be invited to a virtual event hosted by Apple, where myself and about a dozen other iOS music content creators and video production content creators got to see Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro in action on an iPad. I've double, triple checked with Apple that I'm okay to share a little bit of what I was shown there, but I still need to be really careful because Apple are being really careful. So I thought the best way to do this was to answer your questions. So I've gone through YouTube comments, social media comments, and questions from the Logic Pro on iPad Facebook group and picked out some questions that I'm able to answer. So let's do it. There were a lot of questions about Logic Pro and plugins, specifically whether or not you'll be able to load audio units. No, you won't be able to run desktop plugins on your iPad. Logic on iPad is compatible with AUV3 plugins, just like every other DAW on iOS. You would imagine that if Logic on iPad is popular enough, more companies will make their plugins iPad OS and iOS compatible. And if they've updated their plugins to be Apple Silicon Native, then they've kind of done most of the hard work already, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Apparently, there are a hundred stock plugins launching with Logic Pro on iPad, so even if you don't want to fiddle about with any third party AUV3s, you'll still have plenty of plugins to keep you busy. The man, the myth, the legend, Nino Beats asked in the Logic Pro for iPad Facebook group about MIDI effect support, inter-app audio and automation. And Andy Wells also asked about automation in the same thread. Not sure about MIDI effect support, that wasn't anything that I was shown. And Apple specifically say that Logic Pro for iPad works with audio unit extensions. There's no mention of inter-app audio anywhere. And look, we've known that inter-app audio apps were being depreciated for years now, so it really wouldn't surprise me if Apple have chosen to just completely cut them loose in Logic Pro for iPad. When it comes to automation, you can automate the volume of a track, its panning, whether it's soloed or muted, and every parameter of any plugin that you have loaded onto a track. So if you have an Alchemy synth track, for example, you can automate things like LFO rate, the transform pads, reverb, stuff like that. They actually demoed in real time using the brush tool to do this, and that seemed like one of several ways that you can interact with automation to draw in automation curves with the Apple Pencil. Very, very useful. Alan wondered if they will be virtual touchscreen instruments, as in GarageBand, or would we be able to make these tracks in GarageBand and then export them into Logic Pro for iPad? From what I saw, there are several different ways to play Logic's instruments, though the type of instrument doesn't seem to dictate the touch surface that you use to play it, if, if that makes sense. In GarageBand, for example, if you want to play and record a violin, you need to play the sound on a touch interface themed like a violin. That doesn't seem to be the case in Logic. It looks like you can play a guitar sound, for example, using a piano keyboard, or you can play a piano sound using a guitar fretboard touch interface, if you really want to do that for some reason. Also, you can pop out and play that instrument interface at any time. You just tap a button and it slides up from the bottom of the screen. Comparing it again to GarageBand, where you need to swap between different screens to do different things, Everything in Logic Pro seems to happen on that one screen with different controls and windows sliding in and out as you select them. And yes, you can start creating a project in GarageBand for iOS and then move it across to Logic Pro to continue working on it. It looks like Apple have made that process really straightforward and smooth. All right, this was touched on a little bit. One of the reasons given for going the subscription route was that it lowers the barrier of entry so that anyone who wants to can access and use this app. 
I'm still not 100% on how I feel about it. Software as a service in general just sucks. But I did think that a subscription to something like this from Apple would be far more expensive than £5 a month. And looking on the bright side, at least this subscription will mean that Apple will have to update Logic Pro on iPad fairly consistently and add new sound packs and sounds. Otherwise, people will just unsub from it. All right, a quick fire round to finish off here. Uh, no, main stage isn't included here, and I have no idea if Apple have any plans to port main stage over to the iPad at any point, honestly. Yeah, this isn't coming to iPhone anytime soon. Theoretically, I guess it could definitely work on more recent iPhone models, but I'm not sure what that would look like. I'm really interested to see how Apple have made an app this complex work on the iPad minis tiny wee screen. I think iPhone screen sizes and the lack of Apple Pencil support means that this just wouldn't really work on iPhone, really. Honestly, not sure. It wasn't mentioned, though looking at some of the videos and images floating around Twitter of Logic in action, you can see that it doesn't look like full screen support is currently implemented. Hopefully that changes in the future. Right, that's some answers to your questions about Logic Pro for iPad. If you have a question that wasn't answered here, stick it down in the comments, and if I can help answer it, I will. And if you could give the like button a wee tickle on your way down there, I'd really appreciate it. If you want the lowdown on what to expect when Logic Pro for iPad launches, including what features I'm looking forward to the most, then watch this video next.